Hi everyone, this video is the fifth video in my playlist. The playlist is framed around email marketing for affiliate marketers, particularly for beginners. This video is titled Ways to Improve Your Email Marketing Metrics. Before you begin to monitor your email metrics on an ongoing basis, you'll want to determine a baseline for metrics such as open rates, click-through rates, unsubscribe rates, spam complaints. Monitoring all these metrics are important for checking the health and impact of your program. Checking just one or two just won't do it. You'll get a false understanding of how your program is performing. To accurately measure the performance of an email program, you need to track all of these metrics for any changes that could indicate a problem. I'm Jenny Brew from Nomadic Hero. Please subscribe to this channel if you find the information in this video useful. Tap the bell for future updates. Do you want to find out some tips to improve your email marketing metrics? Then keep watching and don't forget to look at the other videos in the playlist. Let's get going. I'm going to start with looking at some average metrics. Now these numbers and rates shown on this page come from a very large survey done by GetResponse in 2019. And when we use the word average, that's exactly what we mean. This is averaged across all industry types, uh, lots of different countries that are using these metrics. And it also uh, includes all campaign types as well. So what we've got is an average email open rate of 22.15%. So this is purely to give us some idea of what is reasonable and what isn't. So we, the averages give us somewhere to start basically. It gives us some benchmarks. So you'll be aware the open rate is just the number of emails that are opened. Uh, by your contacts as you send the emails out. The average email click-through rate is around a 3.43% and the CTR or click-through rate tells you the number of people who clicked on any of the links inside your email. Now this doesn't need to be confused with the click to open rate. You'll see both of these expressions and the click to open rate compares the number of people that opened your message with those who clicked on any of the links. It is a very valuable statistic, this particular one, the click to open rate, because it gives you a really good idea of how well that you are engaging with your audience. Um, so, you know, for the two of them, the, the click to open rate is a better uh, statistic to follow through than the click through rate, but some um, email service providers may not provide you with the uh, click to open rate. You can calculate one from the other and for those of you that like the maths, it's there. If we've got an open rate of 20% for example and a click through rate of 2%, the little calculation there shows you how you can calculate one from the other. So they're very much related, the two statistics. So don't get too hung up about it, but um, they're, they're both quite valuable to have in your armory to check just how well your campaign's going. The other thing we're looking at is the average email subscribe rate, which is, is low and that's what you'd expect it to be at 0.2%. That's two in a thousand and an average email spam complaint rate of about two in 10,000. So these are the averages right across the industry and it just gives you a basis for comparison. As you can see from this slide, the rates vary between Oceania, which includes Australia, North America and Europe. Much higher open rates for Oceania and Europe compared to North America. And this is why we always say take a little bit of care when using averages. How do we improve our open rates? Remember, the open rate for an email is calculated by dividing the number of people who opened an email by the total amount of emails sent. So, how do we improve these rates? First off, we've got to start with what does our audience really look like? Who are they? Think about them. What are their interests? What are their needs? Will they care about what you're sending? 
What we want is to send out quality emails, not quantity, so we don't want to overdo the frequency. You should value your audience's time and you'll see every message you send will get more opens and click-throughs. First impressions do matter and the sign up page, your thank you page, confirmation letter, welcome email. Are they still relevant? How long since you've actually looked at them? Put yourself in your customer's shoes and make sure that your sign up process is frictionless. That is, make it as easy as possible. At the end of the day, it all comes down to giving your subscriber an idea of what's inside. Also, you should take care with your subject lines. They need to be compelling enough to get people to open the email. But remember that your sender name, that is your from, and pre-header text aim to do exactly the same thing. So you should design them together with the goal of optimizing your open rates. It's not about the length of the subject, but rather combining the message. With personalization, it's not enough to say, hey, John, to win the heart of your subscriber. Your message must also be interesting and relevant. Uh, the preheader, it's the first snippet of text in your email that appears next to your subject line. People see it before they even open the email. These numbers show the open rate for the percentage of people that use the preheader compared to those that didn't. And clearly you can get a much better outcome in terms of open rates if you do use a pre-header. So what we're saying here is that and it's important that you do split testing on your subject lines too just to see how well they go. When's the best time to send emails? Uh, survey results indicate around 10 o'clock in the morning shortly after people get to work and have their morning coffee around one o'clock in the afternoon perhaps they're catching up on emails after lunch an increase in click-through rates around about 6 p.m. is indicated uh, every audience is different people change their behavior based on their day or their workload so you really just need to split test some of these things and see what happens um, Email results do change over time and there's a, and what they found is there's a big spike in the first few hours followed by a gradual drop. Almost 19% of all email campaigns are opened in the very first hour after sending. And with each hour your chances of getting more opens decreases. After six hours over half of your emails have already been opened. So if you've got a time sensitive offer, be aware of that at the six hour mark. Consider retargeting. And you can do that via emails or a pay-per-click campaign to follow up with those people who haven't responded within six hours. Even if your offer's not time sensitive, take the time to have a look at your results before following up even though there's only around about 26% of subscribers will open your emails 7 to 24 hours after you send them, it may be worth the wait. Sending more emails sometimes is not the best answer. Now moving on to click-through rates. I have previously referred to click-to-open rates. Uh, these comments are representative of both types of click-through rates. First thing is have fewer calls to action. The whole purpose of this email is to ideally click on that call to action button. So this is your centerpiece and what you should do is only have one or two key actions that you want customers to take after opening your email. So using fewer call to actions is a good thing. You should also make sure they stand out. Don't bury them in the email. Let them stand out quite individually and be quite obvious and visible. And make sure your people who are opening your emails know exactly what you want them to do. So they must not be distracting. Oh, one other thing, and they should be easily clicked on by any other device. That leaves us with the actual copy that's in the email itself. And you should uh, make the copy um, interesting, um, personalize the copy 
Use power words, be descriptive. What you're trying to do is focus on value, but also spark your subscribers' interest as well. If you give them something relevant and personalised to them, it will result in more clicks. And you can use whatever data that you have to hand, such as pages or products viewed, uh, products that they favourited, if you have this information, it will all help. Sometimes you might also need to build some trust. And to be able to do that, you can use things like customers' quotes or testimonials as some sort of social proof. You can show logos, which will build credibility. And your contact details to show you're a real person, easy to reach and with contact. So what you're trying to do is reinforce trust and overcome doubt. Another thing you can do is to segment the list that you're emailing to and be specific and I've mentioned that with the personalization. At this point it's worthwhile making a comment about automated emails. If you want high open and click-through rates then using automated emails triggered by subscriber behavior is the way to go. Newsletters and one-off emails do still work but triggered emails bring the best results and you might ask why and the answer is really because of timing and relevance when someone gets a message straight after taking an action they're more likely ready to read and respond to it the same is true if they find it interesting and relevant so you need to know your audience especially their information needs and preferences with marketing automation, you can collect important data along the customer journey, use it to segment your list and personalize your content. For instance, you can add tags to your contacts based on the products they click and browse. The more actionable data you have, the more relevant your messages will be. And that's why marketing automation cycles bring the best results as is shown on this page. How do we lower our unsubscribe rate. The thing about an unsubscribe rate is you shouldn't look at it on its own. You should look at other um, benchmark rates as well just to get an idea of what else is happening in your campaign. The higher your unsubscribe rate, the more likely you aren't providing relevant and valuable content for your recipients you would expect there will be some attrition. That's, that's totally to be expected. But if the rates start to spike, it may be worth reviewing your content and making some changes. If you've got a decreasing unsubscribe rate, there could be a couple of reasons. You would look at it and go, wow, I've got improving engagement and subscribers don't want to unsubscribe. Or, a different point of view, you could be actually having decreasing inbox placement where subscribers don't see your email to unsubscribe from, i.e. you've got more of your emails going into the spam file, spam folder, and if they're in the spam folder nobody's going to see them and they're certainly not going to unsubscribe, well, they're not going to do anything basically, so they're two very different situations will join your list. Make sure they know what, when and how often they'll hear from you. Review your sign up form, thank you page, welcome email and onboarding sequence. And if you make promises in those documents, make sure that you keep those promises. With these new people coming on board, you've got to make sure that you make a great first impression. So you should offer them your best content. Whatever, whatever it takes, you should warm up those leads. They could be cool and you can warm them up by giving your best content ever. To, and they know then that they've joined the right place. You must also understand why people unsubscribe and investigate and just make sure that, you know, it's not some particular product or some particular campaign that you've done that has made people unsubscribe. There could be a specific reason that can be fixed. Another alternative with your reducing unsubscribes 
can be to offer them a preference centre, that is to offer them the ability to opt down in terms of the frequency with which you email or to choose some other offering from a menu that you can provide them. You'll keep your customers longer if you do this and with those ones who are disengaged or getting close to disengaged it may be that you want to run some sort of re-engagement campaign to uh, wake them up and in that to to reactivate them you may in fact have some sort of giveaway which is a good thing uh, or a, an extra discount or some freebie to win them back but you may want to think about what that campaign a re-engagement campaign should look like before it is actually too late reducing complaint rates the complaint rate is calculated by dividing the number of spam complaints by the number of emails delivered. Complaints are a strong indicator of negative engagement. This metric is useful for identifying patterns and sources of complaints. Okay, so how do we try and reduce the complaint? First off, we've got to know why it happened. If you've got your emails being marked as spam, then you really need to analyze why it's happened. You probably won't know who did it, but you'll be able to figure out what message or campaign may have triggered it. And then you'll need to take steps to fix whatever it was that made the spam occurrence occur. What you should do, be aware of is that when people join your list, when they opt into your list, you should set expectations about what types of emails and how often they will receive emails from you. Now if you haven't set any expectations that's when you may find that people will start marking your emails as spam because they probably don't know who you are or they've forgotten or whatever. But at the end of the day you need to tell people what to expect and then you need to make sure that whatever you tell them that you actually deliver. So you then need to meet those expectations. It's important too to always keep your lists clean. <laughs> People get sometimes disengaged and if you have a feeling that you have disengaged people on your list, then as referred to in, in the previous comments about unsubscribing, you can look for ways to try and reactivate them. And if you can't reactivate them, that is, you, you can't get them interested um, and engaging with you, then you have two options. You can move them to a, another list where you perhaps keep your most valuable campaigns to try and re-engage them that way. Alternatively, you can just take them off your list completely. It's much better to do that than to have a disgruntled person on your lists. And what you should also do is make it easy to unsubscribe. It's better to lose contacts through a normal opt-out than risk spam complaints. Because if you get spam complaints, it does hit your deliverability. And unsubscribes don't. So Now check out these results. This is where you can actually show when quality does beat quantity. Marketers with smaller lists are better at engaging their audiences and their messages tend to get higher average open and click through rates. Take a look at the rates and the lesson for you as a beginner. When you're growing your lists, don't lose touch with your customers. Build relationships just like you would if you were running a corner store. Personalise your subscriber experience and make sure you continue to deliver value to your audience. It will be worth it. Design for all devices. Studies clearly show people use email on all devices, particularly mobile. Your customers interact with your emails whenever and wherever they want. You need to ensure your emails look good on any device and work well with all email clients. So what you should do is start with a call to action, cut out the, the, the rubbish, you don't need any clutter, go finger friendly, constantly split test your results to see 
what templates produce the best conversions. And one thing you shouldn't forget is the actual sale doesn't take place in the email. People actually move back to a website. So make sure that user experience is easy. Follow the path of your subscriber. Click through to your site and then go to the checkout. Make sure all those steps are easy. Test all devices. Make sure they work. So what is important to take away? Keep track of metrics. It's important. On average, marketers lose 34% of new subscribers in the first month of their subscription. Segment your list to engage your subscribers. You'll build more targeted content and provide more personalized experience for your subscribers. And don't wait until subscriber disengages to try to win them back. The average marketer continues sending mail for 259 days after a subscriber last engages with their program. That's a long time. Win back emails have an average read rate of 20%. So it is actually worthwhile doing. If you found this video useful, then you know what to do. Please subscribe and ring the bell for future updates. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.